What is up guys? Welcome back to Overspray. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to paint a hood. Um, I started to realize that um, a lot of my subscribers are actually beginners. Um, maybe they are learning how to paint and want to learn how to maybe paint a hood or maybe just in general, any uh, car part that they want, right? Uh, it could be a bumper, it could be a door, whatever it is that they're trying to paint. So in this video, I wanted to do this a little bit different than some of my other videos. I wanted it to be more of a tutorial type type or style of video. So that way that uh, somebody that is new to this, that doesn't really know, you know, the basics can at least learn the basics and then take it from there on their own time. So what do we have here? Well, here we have a replacement hood for the Honda Civic project car that we're working on. And uh, this is a aftermarket um, one that I bought from Certifit. Um, it does come primed or pre-primed, um, but as you guys can tell, um, I'm gonna scuff it. And I've already began to, uh, to scuff the hood. Now, <clears throat> there's several ways to skin a cat, okay? With body work, it's just, you know, sometimes people do it one way, other people do it the other. Um, it just really depends on the type of part that you have, how it's been prepped, and really it depends on what you wanna do um, since it is your project. But I'm gonna show you what I would do and then you guys can kinda take it from there. So anyway, this is already a primed hood. Like I said, I am scuffing that because I am going to put a layer of primer here. Now I'm not gonna put a super thick layer of primer. I'm only gonna put a thin coat of primer uh, because really this, this hood is pretty much brand new, flat, no dents, no uh, body work is needed, right? Brand new part. And I do recommend that if you are buying parts Try to get the cleanest part possible. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's perfect, okay? Uh, I ran into the issue with, with uh, the front bumper that I painted in my last video. <clears throat> that bumper was new, but it did have some scratches and some gouges. And so it, it just it's more beneficial if you don't really know what you're doing to try to get the most cleanest part possible. Um, it's gonna save you time, it's gonna save you money, and it's gonna save you from, you know, having to do more work than you should have to. <clears throat> so that is my number one recommendation is if you're gonna buy a part, even if it's a used part, make sure it is a clean part and it doesn't have too much damage. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to scuff all the edges everywhere I can because remember if you miss a spot and you paint over that or even if it's primer or whatever it is there's a chance that it, the paint won't stick and that's what it'll, where it will begin to peel. Now the, why do you scuff right? It's people sometimes want to know, know why or understand the process. So the reason why you scuff is you are creating a mechanical adhesion. What is a mechanical adhesion? Well, it's basically just like the word adhesion. Uh, you're getting that paint to stick to that panel. So if I were to paint this and it wasn't um, scuffed, the paint could technically peel, okay? And that's what you don't want because when you have a smooth surface, the paint doesn't have anything to bite on and therefore it increases the chances of that paint peeling. So we scuff to create a mechanical adhesion. Now, just like with a plastic part, if you were to paint a plastic part, you would paint, you would uh, spray uh, adhesion promoter, right? Well, what is adhesion promoter? Well, it's a um, chemical adhesion, okay? So this is a mechanical adhesion because we are scuffing and we're creating these really fine scratches that the paint can actually stick to. And 
um, adhesion promoter is a chemical adhesion, which is basically like if, you know, per se, let's just say it's like spray on glue f for your paint, right? So it's helping that paint stick to whatever you're painting. Now, usually adhesion promoter is uh, mostly used in flexible parts because you want more adhesion um, on flexible parts because it's more prone to, uh, to flexing and paint is not too flexible, as you guys might know, and uh, we'll have a chance of peeling. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and scuff this and then uh, we'll cut you back in the next, uh, in the next stage of the process. So we just finished scuffing this and scuffing only. I still have to clean it, but let me go ahead and show you the gun I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the uh, Harbor Freight HVLP Spectrum with a, uh, sorry, it's upside down, 1.7 fluid tip. And that should be perfect. That's actually a really good primer gun. If you guys are looking for a good primer gun, I would suggest trying this one out. It's pretty cheap. And um, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty good gun. The primer we're gonna be using is a H1000 Waterborne Primer, okay? Um, this stuff has no hardener, no reducer. It's basically shoot right out of the can. Um, like I did say, I'm only gonna put on, I'm probably, in general, I'm probably only gonna do about one, maybe two coats um, because this part doesn't really need that much, right? It's already uh, pre-prepped, if you would, um, or if you will, uh, part, right? So it's already got some sort of sealer, some sort of protector already on it. Um, you could, all right, so this is where it starts getting a little tricky. So first, what kind of scuffing um, pad should you use? In my case, I'm using a maroon, so maroon is actually equivalent to about 360 or 380 sandpaper. It, maroon is that equivalent. When you go for the gray, the gray is equivalent to about 800 grit. Okay, so there's gonna be a difference of grit. Okay, uh, just depends on what you're doing. If I were to paint right on top of this, let's say I didn't put any primer, I didn't put any sealer, I just, I wanted to scuff this and paint right over this. You technically could, but you would scuff it with a gray scotch bright pad. And the reason why is because it's a little bit finer. The base coat will not cover over these scratches. That's why I have to put something on top of that, okay? If I were to scuff it with the gray pad, um, well, there's a higher chance of the base covering the 800 scratches. If I were to put base on top of the maroon scratches, they would not cover, you would actually see scratching in the base, okay? Um, and so that's, that's one thing. So you gotta see, are you gonna put primer? Are you gonna put a sealer on top? If you are, you might wanna go for the maroon. If you're just gonna scuff and shoot, I would say go with the uh, 800. So I went ahead and uh, finished all that. 
I cleaned it with a wax and grease remover and uh, pretty much I'm gonna go ahead and blow it like that and try to dry off any wet spots that are still wet like that one. See that? See the water? Yeah, trying to get rid of all that because obviously you don't want to paint right over water um, for obvious reasons, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and tack cloth once more again because uh, you know paper towels aren't exactly lint free. Even though they say they're lint free, sometimes they're not. Okay, you're, you're still gonna get lint. Okay, and I would recommend using at least two towels or paper towels or whatever it is that you have and and cleaning it off then use a tack rag to pick up any remain uh, remaining residual from those uh, towels okay that's just my recommendation you don't have to do it but that's just the way i do it Alrighty, so we're about to primer this hood. I uh, already got my primer already poured into the cup and uh, let's get ready to shoot. So basically when you wanna shoot, <clears throat> you wanna start with your edges and you'll see as I'm, as I'm painting, but I'm gonna start with my edges and then I'm gonna start painting the hood, okay? Do your edges first. Why? Because you always gonna miss your edges, okay? When you're painting, a whole part the edges are typically the most missed because you cannot really see them right and um, so yeah start with your edges first okay even guys that have been painting for a long time they start with their edges first and then go ahead and paint everything else all right so that's what we're gonna do let's get started finished primering the uh, bottom of the hood sorry I know my hair is all messed up but uh, this GoPro 
it's just keeps giving me problems guys and uh, I just don't have the money to uh, to replace it yet I wanted to get an 8 they were on sale at Costco for like 200 bucks and I just didn't jump on it and now I'm kicking myself because I should have bought it uh, anyways I'm gonna um, talk you through what I did here and then um, and, and show you so uh, basically what I did with the spray gun I'm gonna just go ahead and grab one here just for as an example it doesn't matter which one we're gonna say this is the Harbor Freight primer gun what I do is I go around all my edges and spray my edges okay edges are extremely important okay because if you miss paint right there um, you could ha potentially get paint to start peeling from those edges um, also they look bad and uh, yeah you just you want to make sure you paint your edges so once you get your edges all done right then you're gonna start from one side to the other okay just back and forth back and forth with a good uh, overlap um, and you know make sure that you're going all the way past the panel and um, also somebody asked uh, me in an email why they let go of the trigger um, when you go to paint right so let's say we're going off of the edge people let go and then when they start you know they they uh, they squeeze it again to start painting uh, for one it preserves paint a little bit less overspray uh, all over the place um, also if you were to let's just say you're you're painting in the, like this small area just a you know a, a foot area if you were to go and just paint like this right with not letting go of the trigger what would end up happening is you would have a um, heavy spot on each part that you would uh, change your direction okay so you would have heavy spot here and a heavy spot there and then uh, it would be lighter in the middle so that's also why they let go of the trigger each time they go past so sometimes even though they're you know maybe they're blending or something like that they will let go of the trigger and kind of just kind of fan it okay you're, you're basically you're controlling the paint when you um, you know squeeze and let go of the uh, of the trigger okay so that's one thing um, but yeah so technically if you go off the panel you don't have to let go of the trigger right you can just continue on so let's say we go off of the panel and then we go to the next side we're not letting go we move up just a hair and then we go over right and you're watching that paint as it goes down onto the panel so that way you can see your overlap you're seeing how that paint is coming down is it coming down smooth is it coming down grainy um, all that matters okay and a good painter you know as you get practice a good painter is basically always looking at what they are doing okay just because you see them moving super super fast uh, you know and sometimes I paint like that too I, I paint pretty quickly um, that doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just you know shooting paint everywhere no okay I'm actually watching the paint as it goes down um, and yeah just because I'm moving fast doesn't mean I'm not um, you know controlling the paint okay um, so that's basically it um, overlap is usually somewhere around 50% to 75% um, give or take depending on the paint that you are painting it's going to vary okay um, with candies usually you want you know a, a tighter overlap um, but you know it, it just really depends on the uh, on the paint okay and uh, yeah so we got this thing primered up I did make a couple boo-boos I went to touch it to see if it was dry and it wasn't okay so that was a little boo-boo but uh, you know it is what it is also got a little bit of uh, pieces of black uh, trash if you see right there you could see it it almost looks like there's a there was a hair or something it was actually a piece of trash there and I was blowing it with my air blower and it was kind of just moving along and it kind of left this uh, this little like sand trail or something but uh, anyways and then also I got a little bit of pieces of trash 
here and there coming from these little like uh I don't know what they put in between there some sort of uh you know bonding uh agent but it look, almost looks like foam so and it could very well be foam but um yeah the foam was coming apart and that's what all those little black specks are that's no big deal we are gonna lightly sand this before we go ahead and shoot base and clear in the next video but i just want to show you a basic rundown okay of what it takes to primer a piece of uh automotive part right it could be it could, and it doesn't have to be a hood it could be anything it could be a, a bumper could be a, a door a, whatever it is okay you're you're basically going to use the same thing now with dif the difference between if you're painting a bumper or a hood or something metal is obviously the bumper is going to be plastic so with plastic you're going to need to use some sort of adhesion promoter Alrighty guys, so I really hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this type of a video is actually helping somebody out there that is, you know, wants to do this at home. You know, um, I do this at home in a small, tiny garage. Um, honestly, this garage is probably the size of like a storage unit. Um, very, very small. Um, and yeah, so if I can do it, you guys can do it, okay? Just stay with that mentality. You're not gonna learn this overnight and in one video. This is gonna take some time, but this is the general basics on how to paint a part. And like I said, um, it could be a hood, a bumper, door, whatever it is that you were painting. That could be a complete car if, if you know if it you know came down to that, if that's what you're working on. Uh, same exact process, just in a whole larger scale, okay? And uh, anyway, me and my uh, shop assistant are tired and want to go home. So hope you guys enjoyed. Stay spraying. Catch you guys on the next one.